Amen, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. anybody thinking that we're being disobedient or disrespectful so today um, our scripture reading is coming out of 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 starting at the 13th verse 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 starting at the 13th verse I am going to have you get ready for this um, get, get yourself ready for the scripture and while you're finding your place, I want to explain something. There, uh, the Holy Spirit had given me instruction way prior to the media telling folks that they couldn't meet in their churches. Amen? Amen. And the Lord says, do unto Caesar what is rendered to Caesar. So in other words, when they say by martial law that you cannot do X, Y, Z, the Lord said you will be obedient. But he also had me up at 2 and 4 o'clock in the morning looking at what essential service means. And essential service definition by the governor, a business or an organization that renders render special needs Food, shelter, to the community. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to Google what kind of businesses fall under special needs. The first thing that I found was a church. People, the Lord said, don't lean to your own understanding. And if you have a close relationship with God, God will never allow you to do something you ain't supposed to do. Amen. He then went on to show me, because he's been showing me, that this is a divisive plan to keep folks from coming together. He also told me the big reason was, and it was the first week of March, before they even announced the, the, the shelter in place, they were on the news saying, we recommend churches don't get together. That was, that was a week and a half to two weeks before they start doing the shelter in place. They had already started telling folks, don't go to church. Why? Why, why don't we want to go to church? Okay, let's think logically. Like the world is thinking right now. Oh, because of the, 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 the spread of coronavirus. I'm going to be honest with you. If you really walk in with Christ, the Lord said all these things are going to come, but they will not come near you. Amen. Amen. That's right. He told the people of the, 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 the Israelites, when, when they were getting ready to leave Israel, put the blood of the lamb Amen. over your doorpost Amen. and the death will pass over right. you and your household. Amen. And the other plagues didn't, didn't None of them either. No, there were ten plagues and they did not touch the children of God. People of God, you need to get in your word and you need to start trusting God. Amen. Amen. And remember what I said, do what is due Caesar, what is Caesar's. So, when they tell you you cannot by law, it, it, it is against the law to come out, that's a whole different story. This has been a suggestion to mm. not come together. I also had confirmation because there are uh, several ministries that I watch on TV that do the Sabbath, which is Saturday, and they said they are congregating and because they are mega churches that they have been uh, told if there's more than a hundred people to not have more than a hundred in the sanctuary. So what they're doing is there's a hundred people in the building and the rest of the people are sitting in the parking lot. They're, they're obeying what the local law told them to do. The other thing that I found out is that because there are a lot of churches that are 501c3, 
They received letters and emails telling the pastors and the, the upper uh, uh, leadership to not come together. And somebody asked me, well, didn't you get an email? No, because I'm not 501. C3. And the Lord told me when we started the ministry to not apply for that. Because if I applied for it, the government can tell me what to do with the church. And so I heard a pastor a couple days later that got on live TV and said he was speaking to the body of Christ. And he said, brethren, we really need to come together at a time like this. And he said, and those who are 501c3 you're worrying about your funding because they're threatening churches to take their funding if they don't comply with what they're asking them to do this is all a plot it's an agenda to stop God's people the Bible says when two or more come together what happens? He's in the midst. One will send a thousand, two will send ten thousand. Somebody dropped a, a video in my text message, and there is a constitutional lawyer that said everything that the governor is doing actually is not legal. I have the video. Anybody want me to send it to you? I'll be more than happy to show it to you. You guys got to hit me after service. However, if you know your rights, if you know that all these things they've been saying are suggestive, we suggest, we advise, take heed to our warnings, right? Do you see how easy it was to get them to make a whole state do what they wanted us to do? To comply? Now, what I will tell you what is what they are pressing is between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Do not be on the streets if you ain't working or you ain't got a legitimate reason because they can pull you over because it's a curfew. Now because there's a curfew in place, that's a whole different ball of wax, okay? So people of God, you need to start getting in God's face. Amen. And you need to start listening to what he is telling you to do. Those of you that belong to this church know that God has been telling you week after week after week after week after week this stuff was getting ready to happen. Amen. I gave a prophetic word uh, New Year's Eve watch night. And there was a list of about ten things. And the list from last year, say the last year's list was ten things. Eight of them have come to pass. These things are happening before our very eyes. And the reason is not for us. It's for the unbelievers. And God says he wants to strengthen his people. So this should make you closer to God. We on a shut in, we should be shutting in with our word. We should be shutting in Prayer. We shouldn't be on the phone texting and talking and BSing. We need to be seeking God's face. Amen. Praying a hedge of protection over your family. And for those that don't know God like you do, guess what? God is getting ready to use some of y'all to cover your families. Amen. The Holy Spirit gave me instruction when I I I. I I had a meltdown two days, three days ago. I don't know what day. A big one. And I went off on, why did you pick me? Why do I got to do this? I don't want to do this. All these people are texting me, telling me, oh, you're being selfish. You, you're not listening to the law. You're not doing. No, I'm not doing what man told me to do. Amen. I'm doing what God Amen. told me to do. blood is on my hands. So guess what? He tells me I need you to continue feeding and imparting into my people because what I'm giving you to give them is going to be what they need for the last hour. 
followers. Amen. Now, I sat there and thought about it. Well, what if I don't do what he told me to do? All that I've done up to this point in my walk with Christ is null and void. Because he called me for such a time as this. The prophetic prophecies he's been giving me have been to get us ready for Armageddon. For the last days, for the last minutes, for the last seconds. And he's been equipping his people. He's been telling me the prophet comes to impart, lay hands. Heal the Thank sick, you. cast demons in his name, and activate people. Thank you. Twenty-three people were here yesterday. We had praise rehearsal. I was told, bring the anointing oil. Fill your bottle up. I took the little vials and said, oh, I'm going to make a few. I'm going to bless the people who come tomorrow to, today and give them a bottle of anointing oil. That anointing oil started when we started this ministry on our first women's retreat. That first bottle that we prayed over. And every time my bottle gets about this low, I get a new bottle and I pray over that. And if we have another women's retreat, I bring it, we pray over it. And I mix the bottles. So there's always that original bottle mixed in with the newer bottles. Amen. We went to Tahoe, we got a new bottle. When we took the kids on a snow trip, okay? When we just had our last women's encounter in, in, in Aptos, we got another bottle. So about every, th every two and a half years, we need a bottle of oil. But there's the original oil. And the Lord had me sit here during praise and worship rehearsal and fill up these vials. If I tell you, I, I, it's a little crate and you put them in a little, little slot. I filled up like 15 of them. And he said, no, 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 keep going. So I kept filling them up, filling them up. So now I have 20. And the Lord said, three more. Mm -hmm. So I filled up three more. Guess how many people were here? 23, 23 people. Amen. There were 22 adults and a newborn baby. Amen. And the Holy Spirit said, put this oil in that baby's hands. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit told me to anoint her forehead. How many people know right here is your pineal gland, mm -hmm. your third eye, huh? Anoint her forehead. Amen. Touch her eyes that she may see the Holy Spirit. Touch her ears that she can hear the voice of God. And touch her lips that as she grows, she will speak the word of God. Amen. Amen. I don't even know how old that baby was. Four months. Four months. Okay. He knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I need y'all to not have a spirit of fear. We are supposed to be the sounding clarion trumpet Amen, blurting out, Amen. Jesus is coming! Yes. Yes. Jesus is coming! Don't be afraid! Mm -hmm. So somebody said, well, you ain't supposed to have church. Why am I not supposed to have church? Mm -hmm. It's under 100 people. All the other churches are doing it. If the people don't want to come, they don't have to come. But they need to learn the law. And if you're afraid, I get it. Pray. Go before God and let Him lead you. Amen. Okay? So today's message is vital. And I'm instructed, I was instructed to lay hands and pray over these people yesterday. I'm just going to show one picture. And I don't think y'all can see anybody's faces because they was all covered up. But God, man, he moved. When I say he moved, he moved. And I said, you know what, Lord? I need your help because uh, this is a lot of people. I don't know if y'all could see that, but there were four people laid out 
all at once. Y'all see them? You got one, two, three, four. Everybody was drunk Ooh. in the spirit. People used to carry at the altar and try to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And when they got filled, they couldn't move. They would just be sitting there like, because the power of God is real, y'all. Amen. And there was a few of us that left out here yesterday like that. And God is giving you guys something tangible. Because he said, I don't, he, how many of you know that I've been telling you it's not just my gift? It doesn't belong to me. Amen. Right. Right? He said, I gave you something and now you go out and impart it to the others. He chose the prophets to give the warning. Right? So today's scripture reading is coming out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we're going to start at the 13th verse. Y'all ready for a word? Amen. And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to pray. So let's be decent and in order. What was it again? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 verse. Father God, I ask that the Holy Spirit completely remove me out the way. I ask, Lord, that your people be on one accord. Father, you said when we when you sent them to Terry E in Jerusalem, they were on one accord. And Father, you sent a rushing mighty wind. Lord, I'm expecting your rushing mighty wind. I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to fill this place. I'm expecting your Shekinah glory. I'm expecting a ring of fire. I'm expecting the breath of God to be over your people. I'm expecting to eat fresh manna out of your hand today. I'm expecting to drink the living waters. I'm expecting an encounter with you, my Messiah, my Redeemer, the Alpha, the Omega, the Cristo, the Holy One. The I am that I am. Lord, I pray that you will just saturate this place right here, right now. Father, that you will release your warring and protective and healing and ministering angels. North, south, east, west. Father, that you will fill this place yes, right now. Lord, I ask that you allow me to decrease, that you may increase. Father, allow us to dissect this word, that we may digest it. That we may produce good fruit. For the kingdom of God. Lord I declare and decree. That you are on the throne. You are the sovereign God. The sovereign shepherd. Of all times. You were the same yesterday. Today and forevermore. And I give you the glory. And the honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The, the scripture reads. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at the 13th verse. I read New King James, and the subtitle says, The Comfort of Christ's Coming. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus 
we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the reading of the word. You may be seated. The title of today's message is Resting in Him. Resting in Him. Who needs some rest? Amen. Do you know that when you stress, you don't rest? Amen. Do you know when you worry, you don't rest? Amen. When you're afraid, you don't rest? There's been a lot of people that are off work and they're not resting. They're so consumed with what's going on that they have no peace or rest. Verse 13 says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. When the Holy Spirit gave me this message last night, actually he had given me this the week before last, and I jumped ahead and I didn't understand why he let me skip it. Now I do. Because last Sunday we read the fifth chapter. Okay? And I didn't know why, but now I get it. Because y'all wasn't ready for that yet. See, sometimes things have to kind of be rolled out so you can handle it. You can eat off of it and you can understand as you're tasting new things that they really are good for you. You know, when your when your grandparents used to or your mama or daddy used to make you try to eat vegetables, you'd be like, I ain't eating that. Right? And then, <laughs> then as you get older, you're like, dang, I needed that. That was really good for my body. Right? But we didn't understand the relevance of it. We didn't get it. Right? So as you start to mature in your walk with Jesus, you start to get it. Now, Paul is letting the Thessalonians know that there is comfort for those who have died in Christ Jesus. And Paul is deterring them from grieving excessively. For we need to understand that when somebody dies, and we know that they don't know Jesus, there's a heavy grievance. Mm -hmm. And you can feel it when you go to the funeral. But when you know it's somebody who was a true believer and they pass on, it's almost like a celebration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about? There's a difference. And you can feel it. And the Lord is reminding us. This is like a twofold message. Like I told the ladies yesterday, this is a twofold message. It has to do with back then and what He's telling us, but it also can be relatable to what is going on right here, right now. And Jesus is reminding us that those that are in the world that don't know Jesus are scrambling and worried. Mm -hmm. But those that know Jesus can rest in Him. Right? And Paul is telling them that you don't have to grieve for those that died. Because they know they knew Jesus. Right? And he's saying, I want you to conduct yourselves not with excessive grief. Somebody tell her. So, we need 
to understand that Paul is telling him, don't go walking around with excessive grief, right? Don't go walking around making everybody around you think the world is coming to an end. Huh? He is saying, quit looking like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Quit acting like everybody else. Quit allowing yourself to walk with this Corona gonna get me. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm shaking in my boots. Right? What? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You ain't coming to get me. You ain't coming nowhere. No plague is coming near me nor Amen. my household. Yes. That's right. That's right. Where did Sheila go? I don't know. They called her in the back. Okay, well somebody needs to take the thing. Amen. So listen. We need to understand that we cannot look like the world. We cannot. You got to conduct yourself as such. Okay? And how are people going to believe you that you trust Jesus when you like this? <laughs> 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 no, she did it. No, she did it. Brother. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Well. Mm. Don't come over here. Keep your distance. You guys, I'm not trying to make fun because it is serious. But what I'm saying is that you have to know that you know who Jesus is. Amen. You have to know that your Lord and your Savior, how much stuff has he got you out of? Mm. How much stuff has he already saved you from? Amen. Do you think he's going to allow you? Well, let me back up. Because guess what? If he allows you to go through it, you needed to go through. Amen. Yes, that's right. Just like my husband. He needed to go through having a heart attack and go through the whole process of getting a heart pump and Amen. then having a heart transplant. Because wow. that's what broke him down to start serving God. Amen. 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 So if you got to go through some things, that's because you was so hard-hearted and hard-headed that God needed to allow something to get your attention. Because yeah. yeah. you thought you had it all figured out. I'm a good person. I got a good heart. I do good things for people, but you ain't serving me. Mm. So now I'm going to afflict your health. I'm going to afflict your finances. I'm going to afflict... Your family, I'm going to afflict something to make you pay attention. Amen. And you know what's sad? We didn't have to do all that. All we had to do was be obedient. All we had to do was say, you know what, Lord? This ain't making no kind of sense to me, but I'm going to follow your instruction. I'm going to do what you're telling me to do. While the world is telling me no, I ain't going to listen to the world. I'm going to go in my prayer closet yeah. and I'm going to get in your face mm -hmm. and I'm not leaving here until I get a clear answer mm -hmm. that I know that I know that I know this is what you want me to do. He does not give us a spirit of confusion. Mm -hmm. Paul said you can't be walking around like everybody else. He said I need y'all to be the example huh, and, and, and of how to behave. If you really are in Christ Jesus. See, because you need to also understand that death is not final. Oh, I think that went over somebody's head. Death is not final. 
We're in rented suits, y'all. Remember when we went to Felix, 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 what was the name of that place? And you go get your little tuxedos, man. Felix. 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 Yeah, Felix tuxedos, right? You go and you put on a, you go get a, a rental. And when that time frame expired, you needed to return that suit. Because if you didn't, it was going to be excessive charges. Our physical bodies are like that. Mm -hmm. We in a rented suit. Amen. And if you don't do what you're supposed to do with this suit mm -hmm. while you are in possession, mm -hmm. you will have excessive charges when you have to return. Amen. They don't. They don't. <laughs> but it's okay. Mm -hmm. I went too deep for some of y'all. <laughs> We have to understand that there is a lot of people that think death is a finality. How many people understand that right now that there are very elite people, meaning financially wealthy, that are trying to go after transhumanism. They are trying to seek everlasting life. Let me take my brain and after my body gives out, I'm going to take my brain and implant it in a, in a, in a robot. So I can keep living. Mm -hmm. You cannot play God. Mm -hmm. You also got folks that are seeking a virus, a, a, a cure. And little do you understand, you're a guinea pig waiting right. to be set up. Because you're so eager for a cure instead of the curer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do, what do 
you mommy give you? That's right. Because I want to be your buddy. I don't want to hurt your feelings. And then Johnny gets old enough to go into the world and you supposed to be paying me $30 an hour. Wow. I ain't got no experience, but I'm entitled. Wow. Yeah. Excuse right. you. You're entitled? To what? You can't talk to me like that. That's right. <laughs> Straight up. Huh? You know why? It was a it was a plan. Sorry y'all, sorry. It was a plan. Right? The enemy wanted to specifically break down the body of Christ. I'm about to blow somebody weave off today. Check this out. We said this yesterday. You got folks that live in neighborhoods. Mm. Oh, here she goes. And then you got folks who live in communities. If you live in a neighborhood, you got a liquor store on every corner. You got poverty. You got a controlled group that you can manipulate. And you put them in cages in their own communities, in projects, and they think no more than Section 8. They think no higher than a government check. Mm -hmm. They have no concept of coming out to the other side yeah. because we have now manipulated you like the rat mm. in, the, in, the, in the little cage that if you go to the feeder and you get what you want and you go back to your nest, that's all you're ever going to do. Yeah. When they open that door to take away that blockage that was containing that rat, that rat ain't going nowhere right. because the rat has now been trained to stay in confinement. That's right. Yeah. Yeah.
This is what we need to start and stop buying your kids Jordans. Make them get a damn job. Right. And buy their own shoes. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to tell y'all to start implementing life skills. Instead of giving them a video game to sit there and, and dumb down their mind, give them a book. Right. Teach them about the Lord. Start allowing them to think. We are not teaching people anymore. Right. If it can't be hand delivered, pop a button, push a pill. I mean, pop a pill, push a button. I don't want it. That's too much work. I said that back. <laughs> it's too hard. We don't. We don't want to listen. We don't want to even think. Just give me the answers. That's right. I don't, don't want to go through it. Just here. I told the ladies yesterday. Quit chasing the gift. Go after the gift giver. When you go after the gift giver, huh? Just like right now. Why are we chasing the cure? Go find the cure himself. Okay, all that was free. Let me get back to my message. He needed them to understand, okay, that they that know Jesus is promised eternal salvation. And I'm going to just say this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. Amen. For those that do not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, they have no hope for the future. So to them, death is finite. It's definite. It is ending uh, uh, everything as they know it. And the, the, the ending is going to be met with fear and uncertainty. And many are walking right now in extreme fear. And as we turn on our televisions, all we are seeing is fear. Fear is being forced down your throat. Would y'all agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many don't understand that all of this that we are experiencing right now is a test. God is allowing things to happen to see what type of decisions will you make. He has given you a warning. And he has blessed all of us with ample time to prepare for what we are experiencing this very moment. The coronavirus. COVID-19. Are we too going to start looking like we ain't got no hope? But if you belong to Christ Jesus, he is our hope for all eternity. And you see, if we believe, huh? Others around you will believe. If, if we know that Jesus died and he defeated death, if he defeated death, he can certainly defeat coronavirus. Amen. Amen. He got up off the dead tomb, the death tomb. He came out of it. And he made sure that it wasn't no, oh, well, he really wasn't dead. Three days. In three nights. So there was no question. Wasn't no parlor trick. Wasn't no, well, maybe he really wasn't dead. No, it was specific. He rose three days later. And part of God's promise to his children is that when Jesus returns, oh, somebody better catch this, those that are asleep, will be granted access. They are going to wake from their sleeping graves. You know, everybody say, oh, they're in heaven. Ain't nobody in heaven yet. Everybody's asleep. I, I have a question about that. Can, I ask? Can we save it for later? Okay. 
we are asleep. And the scripture says, we, we, had a, we had a message about that. The Holy Spirit had us deal with this. Think of somebody in a coma. They go in the hospital. They got clothes on. They take all their clothes off and they hang their clothes in the closet. And they lay in the bed and now they're in a coma. When Jesus says it's time, the spirit goes in heaven. But the, the, the body, the body, the soul, the mind, right? He'll put them back together. And then they rise and they go be with Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Right? So when Jesus comes in that room and he puts it back together, the soul with the spirit, they can go back together Amen. to Jesus. Amen? Amen? And we need to understand that he will not keep his promises. Ever. Jesus he will not keep his promises. God promised us some certain things. God promised that if you are surrendered to me, you give your life to Jesus, you are promised eternal salvation. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? He will not not keep. Yeah, you he said he will, will not not, not keep. keep. Oh, oh, I'm talking too fast. <laughs> He will not yeah, never yeah. keep his promise. Yeah. 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 You know this. I was wondering, like, why is everybody looking at me crazy? I'm listening, Pastor. That's good. Right. He will wait. Let me read. Let me say that again. He will never not keep what he promised us. Amen. And he promised us eternal <laughs> salvation. Did he not? Yes. And he said, if you give your life to me, if you surrender to me, you will have eternal salvation. Amen. Period. So, while you're on earth, you got to go through some things. And you got to be a vessel so other people can see you really believe what this book says. You got to be an example of what it looks like to follow the word of God. You can't be like, yeah, man, I'm going to go to church Sunday. And, uh, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> and your friend looking at you like, and then they see you Sunday. <laughs> I just went to church. Excuse you? You, you think you're going to win somebody to Jesus? What you smoking? Remember it. No, I ain't beating up on my smokers because I know I got a few of y'all still hanging around. It's okay. <laughs> when God is ready to remove that desire, he will take it. But you have to understand you got to start seeking him more than other stuff. Amen. Right? And you have to understand that eventually you'll look up and be like, I ain't smoked no weed in like a couple months. Right? You'll start to realize I'm not thinking the way I used to think. I'm not craving the things I used to crave. I'm not doing the things I used to do. Okay? We got to be examples. And we cannot be fearful or worried about what's going on. But we need to learn to walk upright and be confidently uh, 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 representing who we say we believe in. Despite what all is going on, despite all the fear and the worry in the world, we need to be reminding ourselves that we are covered by the blood and there are no weapons formed against us that will prosper. Amen. And this is the one area you cannot be ignorant about. Your entire relationship with Jesus is based on helping other people see us walking and living boldly in Jesus. Yeah. Being faithful and confident and understanding that for all eternity we will be with him. Fear does not be 
belong to God's children, but to those of the world. Amen. Thank you. 15 says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. The Lord himself. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. The Bible is clearly telling us that those alive huh, and remain like us right now until Christ comes back will by no means proceed, mean, meaning we will not go before those that are dead in Christ. Those that are asleep in Christ. The graves are going to open up. Thank you. And those that died believing in Jesus are going to come out of their graves and they're going to be caught up and go with Jesus and Amen. Jesus is coming to get us next. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, the folks that took their last breath on earth and leave this world and their fleshly bodies go into sleep when Jesus comes back, right, for them. There's order to everything. God is a God of order. God says his word will never return void. God says he will not be mocked. God says that his word will never return void. He also says don't add nothing to it and don't take nothing away from it. That's right. So those that died are uh, 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 simply resting in him. Okay? And I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, get some rest. 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 See, they are resting, those that are sleeping, and undisturbed rest. They are sleeping in Jesus. And many of us here right today need to be resting in him uh, because all of this that's going on in the world at this very moment, folks are losing it. Huh? And they're choosing to lean on their own understanding and they are not calling on Jesus to help them with the confusion that is going on right now. Who in here would like to rest in the arms of Jesus? Amen. And not fear or worry about anything or anyone at all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, guess what? You can. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is say, I need you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hold me, Lord. Yeah. Comfort me, Lord. Yeah. Take this worry away from me, Lord. Mm -hmm. It doesn't belong to me. We got to trust in the Lord like we've never trusted <clears throat> in Him before. And when we accept and truly understand that we are uh, under His special care, He is uh, our protector. Nothing or no one can harm you or hurt you. Listen to verse 16 carefully. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The Lord himself is coming back to get y'all. Right? Mm -hmm. He is coming to get you. He's going to take us home with him in heaven. 
and the doctrine about the resurrection and the second coming of Jesus is a great antidote against fear of death. Would you not agree? Yes. That is the cure for your fear. Well, my God got up. He rose on the third day. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He's seated with all power and authority. He is the very foundation of the Christians. And his resurrection, his death and resurrection is the very foundation of the religion of Christianity. And it's, to it's supposed to give us a peace. It's supposed to give you a hope and a joy that we too will be rescued by Jesus when he returns for his sons and his daughters. I want to ask, can somebody today make up their mind today and shout out loud, I'm resting in him. I'm resting in him. See, there will be a shout from the angel's voice and a trumpet of God blowing. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. I'm almost done. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Huh? We will be caught up. See, the, 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 there are folks that were using the term rapture. But the word came from the uh, Greeks, which was caught up. And the Latin word was rapper, uh, rapper, 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 excuse me, rapper. And that is where the word rapture <clears throat> comes from. And it means to be caught up or uh, 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 snatched or seized. Amen? Amen? And saints of God, the Bible tells us that we will be caught up together. We will be snatched up. We will meet Jesus in the air. Amen. And we will always be with the Lord. And there are further teachings that while we are snatched up uh, with the Lord, during the next three and a half to seven years, this earth will be on its own. Mm -hmm. There will be an unsaved earth mm -hmm. and it will be family members and loved ones mm -hmm. that didn't believe you when mm -hmm. you were here. Well. Huh? They will be left to their own devices and they will try to call out but God is not going to hear them. Mm -hmm. Because when he gave them the time to repent, yes. nobody was listening. Mm -hmm. Nobody was listening. There, 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 there. Anybody seen the movie Left, Left, uh, left, behind. left behind? Huh? It, it, let me tell you. What blew my mind is when he was telling me this. He said the media is going to provide 24-hour coverage around the clock. Oh. News reporting on the mysterious dis disappearances of those loved ones that just vanished. And the Lord said they're already doing it with the coronavirus. That's exactly what it's going to be like. That's all you're going to hear. Where did these people go? Could it have been really what the Bible been saying? Was this really a prediction? No, that's not true. Don't believe that. It's a lie. They just want to scare you. And the devil will still be telling folks the same lies he's telling us right today. Huh? We, we are witnessing history, how the media is being used to play back-to-back -back fear. And I want to say it one more time. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, when you leave here today, remember this. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. What words? The words of the Bible. Saints of God, Jesus has prepared you for what was happening around you. 
And you need to start acknowledging you in Christ Jesus. You need to start trusting what is happening in the world will not affect you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to ask, will somebody touch and agree with me? And I want you to repeat these things. If you touch and agree. Coronavirus, Coronavirus doesn't scare me. Doesn't scare me. Because I'm resting in him. I'm resting in him. My health, My health is, in Jesus. is in Jesus. I am in his hands. I am in his hands. And I am resting in him. I am resting in him. My family, My family is covered. Is covered. Never leave you yes. nor forsake yes. you. Yes.